Okay, today we're going to go over Quick Freezer, which is a portable CO2 pipe freezing system. It's probably the most widely used uh, pipe freezing system in the world. Cobb Industries has been manufacturing Quick Freezer for over 45 years. We've got thousands of kits worldwide, and these have become increasingly popular, especially lately as more and more people discover how easy it is to use and the fact that they don't have to sub out to bring another company in to do freeze seals. They can just get the equipment and do it themselves with minimal training. So we're going to go through the basic setup and operations of Quick Freezer and the operating instructions, show you how to work it, and we're going to go ahead and freeze a two inch pipe today. Today we're going to freeze a two inch pipe, so we'll be using a, the QF3000 kit which will freeze up through three inch pipe. So the kit basically consists of your kit box, with the freeze jackets inside, the hoses, the fittings, everything you'll basically need. Uh, this kit comes complete with two 20 pound CO2 siphon tube tanks. Uh, basically, you've got your hoses in here. And today we'll be using the 103 jacket, which is basically these freeze jackets are just an insulated jacket. Um, and they've got the injection nozzles built in to connect to your CO2. The kit also includes uh, the rubber mallet that you use for when you need to bust up the dry ice a little bit to wrap it all the way around the pipe and make sure you're completely surrounding the pipe with dry ice when that CO2 builds up in the jacket. You also have safety goggles and insulated gloves in the kit as well. So inside your kit you will also find your operating instructions and a freeze log which we'll go through in a little, little bit which basically just helps you keep track of your injection times and your wait times. Um, your operating instructions that you'll see in the kit, we're just going to go through step by step what the setup procedure is and, and um, how to set up and run your freeze. So first you need to make sure that you have more than enough liquid CO2 on hand to do the job. Uh, we'll get into the freeze tables, which will tell you more or less what to expect with regards to how much CO2 you will use for each size freeze. You always want to plan to have more on hand than, than what you think you're going to use because the, the worst thing is to run out of CO2 when you're in the middle of a job. So just make sure that you have plenty of CO2 on hand and keep in mind that you're going to need to keep that pipe frozen for the duration of your repairs or whatever work you're doing on that line or if you're cutting in a new valve or whatever you're doing. It's also important to remember that the tanks that you use have to be high pressure CO2 tanks with a siphon tube or a dip tube. Uh, if you get the kit, you can order the kits with the tanks or without the tanks. So if you're renting your tanks when you do these freezes, just make sure that you're getting a siphon tube tank and that it is a high pressure tank. You want to keep the cylinders upright and cool. You want to keep them certainly below 88 degrees. You, once the tanks get to 88 degrees, the CO2 will not deliver consistently in liquid form. The liquid form of CO2 is what's necessary to create a, a big ball of dry ice around that pipe, which is what's going to give you the, the, the cold energy to, to complete the freeze. The other thing you need to make sure is that where you're freezing on the pipe, you need to make sure that that section of piping has no flow in it. A uh, flowing line will not freeze, so you need to make sure that the line that you're going to freeze is isolated and that there's no flow. You also want to try and stay away from any flowing line that that line that you're freezing may be attached to. So if you're freezing a branch line that's coming off of a header that has flow in it, you want to be as far away from that as possible because you want to get away from that turbulence and that movement to the water that can, that can cause problems with the freeze. As a general rule, you want to be 12 inches away from a flowing line for every inch in pipe diameter or, or that you're freezing. So if today we're freezing a two inch line, you would want to be two feet away from a flowing line. If you're freezing a six inch pipe, you'd want to be at least six feet away from a flowing line. Uh, the same rule applies for a closed valve. You don't want to freeze right next to a closed valve. When you're freezing near a valve, you want to have that valve open. Just make sure that there's no flow in the line again. But if the valve is closed, you need to stay, again, a foot per inch of pipe diameter away from that closed valve or from another ice plug if you're doing a double freeze. So basically, you have to be, for a two-inch pipe, two feet away, three-inch pipe, three feet away 
from a closed valve or another ice plug or any closed connection. Water in the pipe, you want to be as close to 68 degrees as possible or cooler. The warmer the pipe is or the warmer the water in the pipe is, the longer it's going to take to freeze and the more CO2 you're going to go through. And all of our freeze tables are based on 68 degree water. So if you're freezing a line and your starting temperature is significantly higher than that, you need to isolate that line for long enough to bring the temperature down so that your starting temperature is somewhere near the 68 degree Fahrenheit mark. Okay, so again, in your operating instructions, you'll see a freezing table, which basically tells you how long you're gonna to need to inject liquid CO2, what your injection cycle is, and what your wait time is. So are. for the two inch freeze today, we're gonna to do three injections of five minutes, with five minute wait times in between for a total time required of approximately 30 minutes. And we should go through about 18 pounds of CO2 to establish that ice plug. Again, you're gonna use more CO2 than that because you're gonna to have to keep the pipe frozen while you do your repairs or maintenance or whatever work you're doing on that line. So again, it's important to budget uh, your CO2 properly and make sure that you have plenty of CO2 on hand. So we've got our QF103 jacket out of the kit. These are what's called a cylinder valve adapter. You get two of these because we've got two injection nozzles that we're going to be feeding. So the first thing we're going to do is connect these cylinder valve adapters to the tank. It's just a two-part fitting. One end threads onto the tank valve and then the hoses are going to thread onto the other end of this fitting. So we'll go ahead and attach these to our tanks. So once you've got the cylinder valve adapter secure, then you can go ahead and just thread the threaded end of the hose right onto the male thread on the valve adapter. All right, so once your hoses are connected to your cylinder valve adapters on the tanks, now you're gonna connect them to the injection nozzles on the jackets. So you just thread those right on. And it's important when you attach these that you use a wrench on both nuts because you don't wanna just put your wrench on the hose and torque it out and, and uh, risk ripping the, the um, nozzle out of the jacket. So just make sure that you use two wrenches. Go ahead and get them nice and snug. We'll get them both connected here to the jacket. Okay, so once you have your hoses connected to the tanks and to the jacket, uh, next thing you're gonna do is check to make sure that the injection nozzles are clear, that the orifices are clear, they don't have any dirt or grit or anything in there that might block the, the injector. Uh, but keep in mind, when you're working with liquid CO2, you are dealing with very cold temperatures. So in your kit, you will find insulated gloves. So you want to wear gloves and eye protection. So get our gloves on here. And as I said, the first thing we're going to do is check to make sure that we're actually shooting liquid CO2 out of these nozzles. So I'm going to go ahead and open the valves on the tank and make sure that we've got liquid CO2 shooting out of these injectors. It's important when you do this, you wanna make sure you point the jacket away from you or at the floor. So you go ahead and, let me get my goggles on. So we'll go ahead and open the valves on these tanks and make sure that we're getting liquid CO2 shooting out of both nozzles. You can see the, the white snow shooting out of there, that's basically liquid CO2 which turns into dry ice as soon as it interacts with the atmosphere. So both of our nozzles are shooting clean, so that's good. We'll go ahead and shut the gas back down 
and then we'll secure the jacket to the pipe wall and begin our freeze. Okay, so we've connected our hoses to our tanks with the cylinder valve adapters. We've got the hoses connected to the jacket. We've checked our nozzles, made sure that we're getting liquid CO2 shooting through there. There's no uh, blockage or anything happening. So now we're going to go ahead and set the jacket up on the pipe. So in order to do that, once you've selected your freeze location, you make sure that the pipe is clean and you're just going to wrap the jacket around the pipe and it's got a Velcro seam. So we're just going to attach that Velcro and that allows the jacket to fit loosely on the pipe. And then there's, we've got these strings here that are stitched into the jacket. So we use these strings to tighten up the ends of the jacket. So you want to get these nice and snug and that's going to trap the CO2 or the dry ice inside the jacket. And there's enough, there's enough room in that jacket to get several inches of dry ice all the way around that pipe. And that's where we're going to get our cold energy that's going to freeze that water in the line. So you get your jacket on, attach the Velcro, tighten these strings up on the ends to give you a nice snug fit so that we can get a bunch of dry ice on that pipe wall and get our freeze. Now we're ready to proceed with our freeze. So inside your kit you'll also find this pipe freezing log which basically just gives you a means of keeping track of your injections and your wait times to make sure that you're going through the number of cycles that is called for for the particular freeze that you're doing. So you're going to take note of the time, the start time, write that in when you're about to begin your first injection and initial it. It's a good idea to have a timer running too so you can set the timer for the injection time that you're going to be using and for your wait times and that way you keep track of everything and you make sure that you follow the procedure properly. But now that we've We've set up our time log. We noted our start time. We're going to go ahead and begin our first injection, which is going to be a five minute injection. So we'll open both valves on the tanks and start injecting that liquid CO2 into the jacket. We're going to let it run for five minutes and then we'll shut the valves and we'll wait our five minute wait time and then we'll repeat that process. Okay, so we're about done with our first five minute injection here. You can see that the jacket's already filling up with dry ice. You can hear it in there. You, we're already getting a good amount of dry ice in there. By the time we've done our second or third injection, this jacket's probably going to be just bursting with dry ice. And that's what you want. You want as much dry ice in there as possible. You can see that we're already getting some frosting around the, the grommets here, around the injection nozzles. That's good. It lets us know that it's getting good and cold in there. So now that we've finished our first injection, we'll go ahead and shut the valves and begin our first wait time, which is again a five minute wait time for this particular freeze. So we'll shut these valves, we'll let that temperature soak in there, and once we've waited our five minutes, we'll begin our second injection. Okay, so we've finished our first waiting time, so now we're going to begin our second injection. So I'm going to open the valves on the tank again and let that CO2 begin shooting back into the jacket. And you can see how it kind of shoots out of the sides and around the injectors and everything. That's normal. You don't use a regulator with this system or anything. You're just attaching right to the tank, so it's coming out of there at a pretty high pressure and it's natural to see some of that CO2 escaping around the, the ends of the jacket and around the nozzles. Uh, don't be bothered by that. You can see that the jacket's filling up very nicely with, with dry ice. It's getting nice and full and, and firm with, uh, with plenty of dry ice in there. So this is where you use your mallet and you're just going to, we can gently give a few taps here and there on the jacket to bust up some of the big chunks of dry ice and make sure that 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 dry ice is working its way all the way around the jacket. When you're doing a freeze, if you don't, if you get into your second or third injection and you're not seeing your jacket get real nice and full like this with dry ice, you need to check your CO2 supply because if your jacket isn't filling up with dry ice, you're not going to get a freeze. 
Keep in mind, the temperature of dry ice is roughly minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's lots of cold energy. As long as you don't have flow in that line, that pipe's gonna get nice and cold and you're gonna get a good freeze. Okay, we're about done with our second five minute injection here. So again, remember to keep track of your injections and your wait times to make sure that you're following the proper procedure. So I'm just gonna take note of the Second injection, we'll go ahead and shut down the valves again for our wait time and just keep repeating the process. It's just that easy. Okay, so we just finished our wait time. We're getting ready to start our third and final injection. So we're going to open the valves one more time for another five minute injection. You can see the jacket's already pretty much chucked full of dry ice, but we're going to go ahead and give it that final injection. Make sure we've got as much dry ice in that jacket as possible. You can see the jacket's frosting up real good. It's definitely full of dry ice. And we're actually already getting our frost bands here on the pipe. So that's a good indication that we're, that we've, that we're creating an ice plug. Okay, you can see the CO2 is shooting out a little bit from the injector, injection port. So we're just going to give it another couple of whacks, make sure that there's no big chunks of dry ice blocking that injection port. We're going to make sure that the dry ice is able to work its way around inside that jacket and get it completely surrounding the pipe, the OD of that pipe. Got about two minutes left on this injection and then we'll basically be complete. We'll have an ice plug here. Keep in mind if you're doing your repairs at this point, you're going to want to keep giving this jacket a couple of injections every now and then. Make sure that it's staying full of dry ice. You don't have to continue the same cycle. You don't have to do five minute injections because the jacket's already full. But you just want to make sure that you keep an eye on the jacket while you're doing your repairs and make sure that you're not letting that jacket get empty or, or letting too much of that dry ice evaporate away. Okay, so our final injection time is done. I'm going to go ahead and shut the valves on the tank. At this point you could proceed with your repairs or replacing your valve or whatever it is that you need to do. And again, just make sure that while you're doing your repairs or if you're going to be keeping the pipe frozen for any length of time, you just need to make sure that somebody keeps an eye on that jacket and keeps, gives, gives it another injection every five or ten minutes or as needed to make sure that it stays full of dry ice. Again, you can see we've got nice clear frost bands here. Uh, which is your best visual indicator that you've got an ice plug. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull the jacket off and let you just see what it looks like inside, get a look at the dry ice. The nice thing about quick freezer is that even on small diameter freezes, the jackets are big enough to give you a, a good chunk of dry ice in there and you're going to get a nice solid ice plug that's easily the length of the jacket so you're getting a very substantial ice plug in there even on a smaller freeze like this which is good because it's going to hold back plenty of pressure it'll have no problem keeping that line frozen while you do your repairs but anyway we've got the strings undone now so i'm going to go ahead and pull apart the velcro You can see all that dry ice in there, giving us plenty of cold energy. You got a big ball of dry ice all the way around that pipe. So that's basically what the jacket looks like inside. Got a big chunk of dry ice there wrapped all the way around the pipe. All right, so that basically concludes our quick freezer demonstration today. If you have any questions, please go to our website, www.cob-industries.com. That's www.cob-industries.com. Or you can call us on our toll-free number, 
1311 and we've always got technicians available and guys that can answer any questions you may have or help you figure out how to run your freeze or any problems you might be running into just give us a call.